good day, everyone. It's me again, Teacher Kim Poi. Well, um, today, we are gonna talk about... Citation of Sources. But before that, let us first review our previous lesson. Last week, we discussed the strategies in unlocking unfamiliar words and we focused on context clues. We have six strategies here. The first one is definition. The writer directly defines a word. The definition is given and can be found in the context itself. Next, we have synonym. The sentence uses similar word or words to help explain the meaning of the unfamiliar or unusual word. Then there's restatement. The writer restates the meaning of a word, however, it is not expressed as exactly as what's in the dictionaries. Instead of the definition, a word with a similar meaning is given and can be found in the context. Next, antonym and contrast. The writer uses an antonym to give meaning to the unfamiliar word. By the way, an antonym is a word with an opposite meaning. Next, we have example. The context in which a word appears includes one or more examples that help define the unfamiliar word. And then we have explanation. The unfamiliar word is explained within the sentence or in a sentence preceding it. Next, comparison. The writer makes comparison between the unfamiliar word and other more familiar words. Lastly, there's cause and effect. When the cause of an event or action contains the unfamiliar word, the effect might contain some familiar words or vice versa. I have one question though, what is stealing? Do you have any idea what stealing is? Hmm. Perfect. Stealing is the act of taking away something without permission or legal right or the knowledge of the owner. Hmm. Having said that, I have one more question. Do you think stealing is bad yeah. yes correct stealing is bad hmm forgive me I am so inquisitive I have a lot of questions here but I just want to know have you heard of the saying knowledge knowledge cannot be stolen can it be stolen, really? But what if someone stole your knowledge? What would you do? Well, I'm just curious. Is there a law that can protect us from this criminal act? What do you think? Hmm. Yes, actually there's a law. And it's called Republic Act Number 8293, or what we call the Intellectual Property Code of the Philippines. Together, let us read. Republic Act Number 8293, an act prescribing the Intellectual Property Code and establishing the Intellectual Property Office, providing for its powers and functions and other purposes, otherwise known as the Intellectual Property Code of the Philippines. And my sources, https colon forward slash forward slash www.chanrobles.com forward slash legal space 7 code dot htm pound dot yucz1u zero ruve by the way what is intellectual property or ip again 
Let's read. Intellectual property, or IP, refers to the creations of the mind, such as inventions, literary and artistic works, designs and symbols, names and images used in commerce which are protected by the law. My sources, https colon forward slash forward slash www.wipo.in forward slash about hyphen ip forward slash en forward slash and did you know that there are different types of intellectual property yes we have six copyright patents trademarks industrial designs geographical indications and trade secrets and for this specific lesson we are going to focus on copyright what is copyright Copyright is a legal term used to describe the rights that creators have over their literary and artistic works. Works covered by copyright range from books, music, paintings, sculpture, and films, to computer programs, databases, advertisements, maps, and technical drawings. Now, what is citation? Let's read. All together. Citing a source means that you show, within the body of your text, that you took words, ideas, figures, images, etc. from another place. Citations are a short way to uniquely identify a published work, that is, book, article, chapter, website. They are found in bibliographies and reference lists and are also collected in article and book databases. Citations consist of standard elements and contain all the information necessary to identify and track down publications including authors' names, titles of books, articles and journals, dates of publication, page numbers, volume, and issue numbers for articles. My sources https colon forward slash forward slash live guides dot mit dot edu forward slash citing then why is it important to cite sources it's important to cite sources you used in your research for several reasons first is to show your reader you've done proper research by listing sources you used to get your information. Next is to be a responsible scholar by giving credit to the other researchers and acknowledging their ideas. Third is to avoid plagiarism by quoting words and ideas used by other authors. And lastly, to allow your reader to track down the sources you used by citing them accurately in your paper by way of footnotes a bibliography or reference list now i have here the three major citation styles used in academic writing the first one is modern language association or mla second one is american psychological association or apa and the third one is chicago style which supports two styles notes and bibliography and author date and for this specific lesson we are going to focus on Chicago style which is mainly used in history or the humanities and physical sciences natural sciences and social sciences by the way have you seen a bibliography sir what is bibliography a bibliography is a list of all the sources you have used whether referenced or not, in the process of researching your work. In general, a bibliography should include the author's names, the titles of the works, the names and locations of the companies that published your copies of the sources, the dates your copies were published, and the page numbers of your sources, if they are part of multi-source volumes. My sources HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash www.plagiarism.org forward slash article forward slash what's hyphen a 
hyphen bibliography. Sources, sources, sources. Well, talking about sources, did you know that there are two formats of sources? There's the print and online sources. And for this specific lesson, we are going to focus on print. What are print sources? Print sources are published in printed format. There are various examples of print sources. We have books, newspapers, periodicals, journals, magazines, and many more. And for this specific lesson, we are going to focus on books. Now, here is an example of bibliography found in books. You should take note of the author's name, title of work, and the facts of publication. And if you're wondering how it should be written, here is how. Take note that this is for books with one author only, okay? So for the author, it should be author's last name, comma, author's first name, period. In italics, title of book, colon, subtitle, period. Hanging intention, place of publication, colon, name of publisher, comma, year of publication, period. Here we have Shuster Mann, comma, Noah, period. The French Revolution, colon, faith, desire, and politics, period. Hanging indention, London, colon, Routledge, comma, 2014, period. Meanwhile, for books with multiple authors, that means more than one. Authors' names are given as they appear on the title page of the book. In the bibliography, invert the order of the first author's names. Example, last name first, so that they will appear correctly in alphabetical list. Subsequent authors and editors may be written normally without inverting the first and last name. For sources with more than 10 authors, include only the first seven in the bibliography, followed by the word et al, which means and others. Now, here is how you should write it. Author's last name, comma, author's first name, and author's first name, last name, period. Title book, colon, subtitle, period. Place of publication, colon, name of publisher, comma, year of publication. Bonus. Now, here are some examples for the Chicago slash Turabian citation style for articles. This is very important. Remember, all citations in the bibliography must be formatted with a hanging indent as shown here. Oh, it's been a very long discussion, hasn't it? But I do hope that you guys learned something new today. Oh, if that is the case, thank you so much. I hope to see you guys next time. Bye.